Hello everyone, we're today for first to it's now, I'm Ab Haas and with me here is team 14481, don't blink, our power play winning Alliance second pick at the Houston World Championship. Just an absolutely fantastic team. There is so much to learn if your team wants to do something like they did this season. And I'm really excited to jump into it on Behind the Bot. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Annie Mark has parts and products designed specifically for First Through Box competition and First Tech Challenge teams. Many Annie Mark staff are first alumni, mentors, and event volunteers. Visit AnnieMark.com for all your educational robotics needs. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first-based camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsored camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Okay guys, let's start with the elephant in the room. You guys competed at New Jersey States with a completely different robot. You know, you had about a month, month and a half to rebuild. So why go for the rebuild? Obviously it worked out, but what was the decision behind it? Yeah, so generally rebuilds are sometimes not a good idea because of the time constraints that you have to like deal with when you're rebuilding. But with our rebuild, what, what we wanted to do was that we wanted to keep the same archetype. So you can see that we still have like our intake linkage or the double reverse four bar, but we wanted to focus on making everything more consistent. So for example, with our intake, we added rev coders and same with our outtake so that even if there was like a skip or uh, with the linkages, we would still be fine. So it was just taking that same idea and just bringing it to like a more consistent state that we did with this robot. Yeah, no, that that's fantastic. And you know, obviously it worked out. So in general, when would you recommend a rebuild two teams looking to do well and when would you advise against it? Yeah, so with our a New Jersey States robot, there are a lot of changes that we needed to make in order to do good at Worlds, but all of those changes required major redesigns to the uh, existing robot. And so we just found it easier that to just rebuild completely instead of working on that robot. And additionally, one thing we did was that we kept our old robot completely completely intact so that our drivers could still practice with that robot even while the rest of the team assembled this one. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. So let's just jump into the drivetrain of your guys' robot. On the surface, it seems like just a standard mechanum drive, but seeing how fluid and smooth you guys are on the field, there's definitely something more behind it. So walk us through it. Anything you think is really unique and sets you guys apart from other teams? Yeah, so our drivetrain, we're really proud of our drivetrain because of its really compact packaging. So you can see that we just have standard uh, mechanism wheels on about 15 to 1 ratio. And what we love about our drivetrain is the eight motor packaging. So you can see that all eight of our motors for the wheels, our intake linkage, and our double reverse four bar are all in the bottom of our robot and are just belted or chained up to the point of pivot. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And then from a programming perspective, are you guys just using like standard odometry, roadrunner, that type of, uh, you know, ecosystem? Or is there anything different that you want to talk about? Yeah, so for this game, we thought that using a two-wheel odometry system was best. So we have our tracking here and here. We track X and Y with odometry hooked up to rev coders. And then we, uh, use, we do heading with IMU in the control hub. Um, and we didn't think we needed three-wheel this season because... Uh, as for heading, IMU was pretty accurate um, for the autonomous. It didn't need anything super complex that required a third wheel. Um, yeah, no, that's that's yeah. perfect. So now going on to your intake linkage, you know, I think in my opinion, the thing that set you guys apart the most was how effective you were in pre-extending. You know, a lot of bots, they have like three, two, three, four feet of extension and they just never use it in teleop. But with you guys, every single cycle, you were all the way out, just picking up as fast as you possibly can. So walk us through how your intake extension works, any changes you've had, any challenges you faced and advice you have for other teams. Yeah, so we decided to use a dual linkage for our intake slides, and we thought this was fastest because it didn't really involve that much complexity as string can oftentimes um, break and you have to do a lot of restringing and it takes a lot of effort to redo. Um, as for our real intake, we have the intake arms and our wrist, which gives us a lot of flexibility for the cone stack and even when we're picking up cone from the substation. And uh, a lot further than that, we used double helical gears in order to pick up cones very effectively. 
Yeah, no, that that's absolutely fantastic. And so from just like an actuator standpoint, walk me through how you're powering all the different degrees of freedom on your intake. You know, what motors you're using, what servos, and let's talk about that. Yeah, so for powering the intake linkage, we have two motors at the bottom of the robot, uh, 70.9 to 1, or sorry, 130 to 1 ratio, uh, and they're just sprocketed up to the shaft that the linkage pivots on. And two important things with this were that because this is a very high torque situation with the with like really high torque motors, you want we wanted to use chains to, to reduce the skipping as much as possible. And then we also have a shaft that connects both sides together so that because we're driving the linkage from both sides, we're putting even force out. And finally, we have a rev coder on the shaft to make sure that even if there are skips, our intake linkage can still hold its position. And for the actual claw, we actually have a we have a coaxial system. So first, we have two uh, servos geared to one shaft for the actual intake arm uh, pivot, and then we also have one servo that we call our wrist that pivot sha that belts to that same shaft. And because it, of its like because it's coaxial, that sh that servo doesn't actually have to be on the arm and pivot. It can just be fixed on the robot, but still um, perform the the wrist motion. Yeah, no, that, that's absolutely fantastic. And so one thing that I'm interested in is from your state's robot to your world's robot, what changed in the intake linkage system? Like, what did you realize that you really needed to fix? Yeah, so uh, the first thing was that our spacing with the linkage was really bad. So in our state's robot, everything was pushed together a lot more. But with this robot, one of the major things we did was spread it all out. So you can see that our double reverse four bar is on the outside and our linkage is also on the outside, which gives a lot more space so that when this goes up and comes down, it doesn't collide or intersect with the linkage. And with our claw, we made it so that we p shifted the pivot points of the, the actual claw out, which makes it a lot easier for it to grab against the wall. Yeah, no, that's just absolutely fantastic. So now moving on to your double reverse four bar, we've seen a lot of different lift systems throughout the season, you know, linear slides, linear rail, just arms, but the double reverse four bar, the double reverse four bar is definitely not something a lot of teams do. So can you talk about it, how it's powered, any special features and changes you've had with it throughout the season? Yeah, so like we said before, we have all eight of our motors in our drivetrain. So we run this double reverse four bar linkage using two 71.2 to one motors. And then you can see they're belted up to this. So you can see it's belted up to this uh, unique over center linkage we have here. So what this allows us to do is that after a certain point is in a mechanically lock. What that means is it requires zero power draw to retain its position. So we can you know, allocate that power draw to other subsystems like our intake. So you can see this is all of our you know, custom cut CNC metal. We have a crossbar here to maintain rigidity. And then at the end of our double reverse four bar is our outtake. You can see it has a mini turret here. Yeah, and so now one thing I've noticed your double reverse four bar, you're running these doubled up plates. Is right. that something you've ran the whole season? And if not, uh, you know, why'd you change it? Yeah, initially we only had like, you know, one plate instead of doubling up and connecting them. But we found there's a lot of issues when, you know, pre extending double reverse four bar to go in place. It's really wobbly and really hard to line up. So, you know, through our season, uh, like halfway through the season, especially for this rebuild as well, we doubled up on it and then added a crossbar, so it's very sturdy. Yeah, and now going on to your deposit, walk us through right. it, you know, what uh, degrees of freedom you have on right. and how they're used throughout the match. Yeah, so we've got this mini turret at the end of our deposit here so that there's no need for micro adjustments through driving, rather the, op uh, the driver can just hit two triggers on their controller and move this. We've got this, uh, these the outtake arms that are powered through these two sync servos over here. We've got this servo over here, which actually powers our V-Guide, and we have our linkage-driven outtake cloth. Yeah, and uh, I guess the last thing I want to talk about with your outtake before we go into game strategy is your funnel. I think this has seen a lot of changes throughout the season, so walk us through the current design and how you realize that this is what it had to be like. Yeah, so, you know, uh, before we had this, we saw there's a lot of errors where it would, like, flip out the back, it would come out the side. So we print, 3D printed this funnel over here so that in the event that it doesn't seed properly right in the beginning of our transfer, there's this funnel here to help it guide it into our metal hopper. Sure. And so, uh, you know, another reason I think you guys were just so, so dominant in your eliminations matches, you know, you only lost once in 11 matches. It's just so amazing that you were able to do that is your game strategy. You guys finished the codes basically every single time. You didn't waste any ownership. You didn't waste any junctions. So how did you guys develop your game strategy throughout the season? And how did you decide what to do in a match? Yeah, so going into Elims, we realized that um, 
when you pace yourself, you should try to mirror the other team, right? So the, if the other team is finishing cones at a fast rate, you can finish them just as fast and one-up them on every pole that they place on. And if they're going slow, you wait it out and place it uh, exactly when they place it as well. So this worked out pretty well for us in, in a way that our partner mirrored the, uh, their side robot and we mirrored the robot on our side. And in auto, we also wanted to um, make sure that we went for the stack and locked in place at the center line so that um, it was hard for, for any team to push us while, we, while also obstructing the other team from uh, grabbing the cones on their side. Yeah, no, that's uh, absolutely fantastic. And obviously, it worked out so, so well for yeah. you guys. You know, this has just been a fantastic interview. Everybody, this is Team 14481. Don't blink. Our power play world champions winning alliance second pick. Reporting for first updates now, I'm Abbas. Thank you for this fantastic opportunity. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first-based camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsored camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.